Ah, hi YouTube. What is the biggest wave humans can ride on this planet? How does the length of a country sound? A thousand kilometers and up to 12 kilometers high. That is what you can do with the magic of gliding. What are we talking about? Mountain waves. So the wind bounces over mountains and mountain ranges and creates these enormous giant waves, just like water flowing over a stone in a river. Except these ones, we as glider pilots can take advantage. We can surf the skies in these giant waves for hours and hours. Most non-glider pilots avoid these kind of conditions. But for us glider pilots, we're not scared of a bit of turbulence. So how do these wave systems form? Let's start at the beginning, shall we? The Earth was created in seven days. Oh wait, sorry, uh, not that far back. So New Zealand is created from tectonic plates colliding, one going up over the other. That creates mountain ranges throughout most of the country. These mountains are protruding high enough up into the atmosphere that the fast moving upper winds have to bounce over the mountains. They can't go through, they can't go around, so the wind is forced up over the mountains. And you know what happens to something that goes up? It must come down. And when it comes down, it can often do so in such a way that it bounces, much like waves bouncing off a stone in a stream or a river. So what kind of conditions do you need to create this magical monument of weather? Well, for a start, you need medium to high speed winds. You can certainly get wave with slow winds, but it's not nearly as useful to glider pilots. It doesn't create enough lift to be useful. We need laminar stable air. This is the opposite of thunderstorm weather, which is very unstable. Anytime you've got vertical air movement in the atmosphere, you're not gonna get good wave. Third thing, you need the wind direction reasonably perpendicular to the mountain range. So if it's at too much of an angle, the wind tends to slide along the mountain range rather than being forced up over the top of it. Sometimes we have a lower level wave bouncing down over the mountains and then higher up at altitude there's another bigger wave system bouncing over the top of that. Wind can be moving at different speeds at different levels to create this sort of effect and at various altitudes you also have different moisture levels. What does all this moisture do? Well it can create clouds. With wave systems you quite often get what we call lenticular clouds Lenticular means lens shaped. Generally, a nice smooth looking cloud indicates that there's smooth air moving at that altitude. Quite different to what you get down lower in amongst the mountains where you'll often have rougher looking clouds. So how are these amazing lenticular clouds formed? What is happening? The cloud is staying stationary and the wind is flowing through it. As that air is lifted, it condenses into a cloud, it then starts descending, and as it descends it dries out again and the cloud disappears. And you end up with this beautiful lens shaped cloud. Often there's various different amounts of uh, moisture at different levels, so you can get these things stacked on top of each other, such as this one, photographed by a commercial airline pilot. We also get what we call roll clouds or rotor clouds. As the wind bounces and creates a peak, underneath that peak is what we call this rotor. And it's very rough, turbulent air, often rotating and churning up with itself. And uh, I've certainly experienced the worst turbulence of my life flying through rotor. Sometimes, depending on the moisture levels of the air, so the whole wave system could be completely blue and you can't see where it is at all or you could have clearly defined clouds marking where everything is. So how high can gliders fly in wave systems? Well, the world record is currently the Perlin 2 project, which has managed to achieve 76,000 feet. Now this aircraft is a glider, but it's one that's been specially designed for high altitude flying. It's got a pressurized cockpit and it's being developed in conjunction with Airbus. Obviously, most normal gliders don't have pressurized cockpits, so we're limited by a number of factors, the most crucial of which is your oxygen system on board. Typically, most normal gliders can fly up to about 30,000 feet 
with a uh, full-on oxygen mask. And if you're just using a little nose cannula system, which goes in your nostrils, that can fly to about 20,000 feet. And if you hear a little uh, puff every once in a while in my videos, that's what that noise is. It's the oxygen system delivering a little burst of oxygen into my nose. So stay tuned for the next episode where we talk about how you actually go and fly in a wave system. All right, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.